David in old age. Now King David was old, advanced in age. And they covered him with garments, but he could not keep warm. So his servant said to him, Have them search for a young virgin for my lord the king, and have her attend the king and become his nurse. And have her lie on your chest, so that my lord the king may keep warm. So they searched for a beautiful girl throughout the territory of Israel, and found Abus Hag the Shunammite, and brought her to the king. The girl was very beautiful. And she became the king's nurse and served him, but the king did not become intimate with her. Now Adonijah the son of Haggoth exalted himself, saying, I will be king. So he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen, with fifty men to run before him. And his father had never rebuked him at any time by asking, Why have you done so? And he was also a very handsome man, and he was born after Absalom. Now he had conferred with Joab the son of Zeruiah and with Abirthal the priest. And they allied themselves with Adonijah. But Zadok the priest, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, Nathan the prophet, Shemir, Ray, and the mighty men who belonged to David, were not with Adonijah. Adonijah sacrificed sheep, oxen, and fattened steers by the stone of Zoileth, which is beside Anrogil. And he invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servants. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, Benaiah, the mighty men, or his brother Solomon. Nathan and Bathsheba. Then Nathan spoke to Bathsheba the mother of Solomon, saying, Have you not heard that Adonijah the son of Haggoth has become king, and David our lord does not know it? So now come, please let me give you advice, and save your life and the life of your son Solomon. Go at once to King David and say to him, Have you not, my lord the king, sworn to your servant, saying, Solomon your son certainly shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne? Why then has Adonijah become king? Behold. While you are still there speaking with the king, I will come in after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba entered to the king in the bedroom. Now the king was very old, and Abus Hag the Shunammite was serving the king. Then Bathsheba bowed and prostrated herself before the king. And the king said, What is on your mind? So she said to him, My lord, you yourself swore to your servant by the Lord your God, saying, Your son Solomon certainly shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne. But now, behold, Adonijah is king. And now, my lord the king, you do not know it. He has sacrificed oxen and fattened steers and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the sons of the king, Abirthal the priest, and Joab the commander of the army. But he has not invited Solomon your servant. And as for you, my lord the king, the eyes of all Israel are upon you, to announce to them who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise it will come about, as soon as my lord the king lies down with his fathers that I and my son Solomon will be considered offenders. And behold, while she was still speaking with the king, Nathan the prophet came in. They informed the king, saying, Nathan the prophet is here. And when he came into the king's presence, he prostrated himself before the king with his face to the ground. Then Nathan said, My lord the king, have you yourself said, Adonijah shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne? For he has gone down today and has sacrificed oxen and fattened steers and sheep in abundance and has invited all the king's sons, the commanders of the army, and Abirthal the priest, and behold, they are eating and drinking in his presence. And they say, Long live King Adonijah. But me, even your servant, Zadok the priest, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and your servant Solomon, he is not invited. Has this thing been done by my lord the king, and you have not let your servants know who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Then King David responded and said, Summon Bathsheba to me. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. Then the king vowed and said, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from all distress, certainly as I vowed to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, saying, Your son Solomon certainly shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne in my place. I will indeed do so this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground, and prostrated herself before the king and said, May my lord King David live forever. Then King David said, Summon to me Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And they came into the king's presence. And the king said to them, Take with you the servants of your lord, and have my son Solomon ride on my own mule, and bring him down to Gion. And have Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there as king over Israel, and blow the trumpet and say, Long live King Solomon. Then you shall come up after him, and he shall come and sit on my throne, and he shall be king in my place. For I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and Judah. Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen. May the Lord, the God of my lord the king, 
say the same. Just as the Lord has been with my Lord the King, so may he be with Solomon, and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord King David. Solomon anointed king. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benai the son of Jehoiada, the Karatites, and the Pelatites went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule, and brought him to Gin. And Zadok the priest then took the horn of oil from the tent, and anointed Solomon. Then they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, Long live King Solomon. And all the people went up after him, and the people were playing on flutes and rejoicing with great joy, so that the earth shook at their noise. Now Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard this as they finished eating. When Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, Why is the city making such an uproar? While he was still speaking, behold, Jonathan the son of Abirth by the priest came. Then Adonijah said, Come in, for you are a valiant man and you bring good news. But Jonathan replied to Adonijah, On the contrary. Our Lord King David has made a Solomon king. The king has also sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benai the son of Jehoiada, the Karatites, and the Pelatites. And they have mounted him on the king's mule. Furthermore, Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king in Gion, and they have come up from there rejoicing, so that the city is going wild. This is the noise which you have heard. Besides, Solomon has even taken his seat on the throne of the kingdom. Moreover, the king's servants came to bless our lord King David, saying, May your God make the name of Solomon better than your name, and his throne greater than your throne. And the king bowed himself on the bed. The king has also said this, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has granted one to sit on my throne today while my own eyes see it. Then all the guests of Adonijah trembled and got up, and each went on his way. Adonijah also was afraid of Solomon, and he got up, and went and took hold of the horns of the altar. Now it was reported to Solomon, saying, Behold, Adonijah is afraid of King Solomon, for behold, he has taken hold of the horns of the altar, saying, May King Solomon swear to me today that he will not put his servant to death with the sword. And Solomon said, If he is a worthy man, not one of his hairs will fall to the ground. But if wickedness is found in him, he will die. So King Solomon sent men, and they brought him down from the altar. And he came and prostrated himself before King Solomon, and Solomon said to him, Go to your house, David's command to Solomon. As David's time to die drew near, he commanded his son Solomon, saying, I am going the way of all the earth. So be strong, and prove yourself a man. Do your duty to the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, and his testimonies, according to what is written in the law of Moses so that you must succeed in all that you do and wherever you turn, so that the Lord may fulfill his promise which he spoke regarding me, saying, If your sons are careful about their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and all their soul, you shall not be deprived of a man to occupy the throne of Israel. Now you yourself also know what Joab the son of Zeruiah did to me, what he did to the two commanders of the armies of Israel, to Abner the son of Ner and to Amazah the son of Jether, whom he killed. He also shed the blood of war in peace. And he put the blood of war on his belt that was on his waist, and on his sandals that were on his feet. So act as your wisdom dictates, and do not let his grey hair go down to Shal in peace. However, show kindness to the sons of Barzillai the Gileadite, and let them be among those who eat at your table. For they assisted me when I fled from Absalom your brother. And behold, you have with you Shemay the son of Gear of the Benjaminite, of Beurim. Now it was he who cursed me with a painful curse on the day I went to Mahanaim. But when he came down to meet me at the Jordan, I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. But now do not leave him unpunished, for you are a wise man, and you will know what to do to him, and you will bring his grey hair down to Shul with blood. Death of David. Then David lay down with his fathers, and he was buried in the city of David. Now the days that David reigned over Israel were forty years, in Hebron he reigned for seven years, and in Jerusalem he reigned for thirty-three years. Then Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his kingdom was firmly established. Now Adonijah the son of Haggoth came to Bathsheba the mother of Solomon. So she said, Do you come peacefully? And he said, Peacefully. Then he said, I have something to say to you. And she said, Speak. So he said, You yourself know that the kingdom was mine and that all Israel intended for me to be king. However, the kingdom has turned around and become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. So now I am making one request of you. Do not refuse me. And she said to him, Speak. Then he said, 
please speak to Solomon the king, for he will not refuse you, that he may give me Abishag the Shunammite as a wife. And Bathsheba said, Very well. I will speak to the king for you. Adonijah executed. So Bathsheba went to King Solomon, to speak to him for Adonijah. And the king stood to meet her, bowed to her, and sat on his throne. Then he had a throne set up for the king's mother, and she sat on his right. Then she said, I am making one small request of you. Do not refuse me. And the king said to her, Ask, my mother, for I will not refuse you. So she said, Let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah your brother as a wife. But King Solomon answered and said to his mother, And why are you requesting Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Request for him the kingdom as well, since he is my older brother, for him, for Abirthal the priest, and for Joab the son of Zeruiah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, May God do so to me and more so, if Adonijah has not spoken this word against his own life. Now then, as the Lord lives, who has established me and set me on the throne of David my father, and has made me a house just as he promised, Adonijah certainly shall be put to death today. Then King Solomon sent the order by Benair the son of Jehoiada, and he struck him so that he died. Then to a birth by the priest the king said, Go to Anatoth to your own field, for you deserve to die. But I will not put you to death at this time, because you carried the ark of the Lord God before my father David, and because you were afflicted in everything with which my father was afflicted. So Solomon dismissed Abirthba from being priest to the Lord, to fulfill the word of the Lord, which he had spoken regarding the house of Eli and Shil. Joab executed. Now the news came to Joab, because Joab had followed Adonijah, though he had not followed Absalom. So Joab fled to the tent of the Lord and took hold of the horns of the altar. And it was reported to King Solomon that Joab had fled to the tent of the Lord and was beside the altar. Then Solomon sent Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go, execute him. So Benaiah came to the tent of the Lord and said to him, This is what the king has said, Come out. But he said, No, for I will die here. So Benaiah brought back word to the king, saying, This is what Joab spoke, and so he answered me. And the king said to him, Do just as he has spoken, and execute him and bury him, so that you may remove from me and from my father's house the blood which Joab shed without justification. The Lord will return his blood on his own head, because he struck two men more righteous and better than he and killed them with the sword, while my father David did not know about it. Abner the son of Ner, commander of the army of Israel, and Amazah the son of Jether, commander of the army of Judah. So their blood shall return on the head of Joab and on the head of his descendants forever. But for David and his descendants, and his house and his throne, may there be peace from the Lord forever. Then Benaiah the son of Jehoiada went up and struck him on put him to death, and he was buried at his own house in the wilderness. And the king appointed Benaiah the son of Jehoiada over the army in his place, and the king appointed Zadok the priest in place of Abirthba. Shemer executed. Now the king sent men and summoned Shemer, and said to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem and live there, and do not leave there for any other place. For on the day you leave and cross the brook Kidron, you will know for certain that you will assuredly die. Your blood will be on your own head. Shemer then said to the king, The word is good. Just as my lord the king has spoken, so your servant shall do. So Shemer lived in Jerusalem for many days. But it came about at the end of three years, that two of Shemer's servants ran away to a church son of Makah, king of Gath. And others told Shemer, saying, Behold, your servants are in Gath. Then Shemer got up and saddled his donkey, and went to Gath to a church, to search for his servants. And Shemer went and brought his servants from Gath. And it was reported to Solomon that Shemer had gone from Jerusalem to Gath, and had returned. So the king sent men and summoned Shemer, and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord, and solemnly warn you, saying, Know for certain that on the day you depart and go anywhere, you shall assuredly die? And you said to me, The word I have heard is good. Why then have you not kept the oath of the Lord, and the command which I imposed on you? The king also said to Shemer, You yourself know all the evil that you acknowledge in your heart, which you did to my father David. Therefore the Lord will return your evil on your own head. But King Solomon will be blessed, and the throne of David will be established before the Lord forever. So the king commanded Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and he went out and struck him so that he died. And the kingdom was established in the hands of Solomon. Solomon's rule consolidated. Now Solomon formed a marriage alliance with Pharaoh king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her to the city of David until he had finished building his own house in the house of the Lord, and the wall around Jerusalem. The people were still sacrificing on the high places, 
because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. Now Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David, except that he was sacrificing and burning incense on the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, because that was the great high place. Solomon offered the thousand burnt offerings on that altar. In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. And God said, Ask what you wish me to give you. Solomon's Prayer. Then Solomon said, You have shown great faithfulness to your servant David my father, according as he walked before you in truth, righteousness, and uprightness of heart toward you. And you have reserved for him this great faithfulness, that you have given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, yet I am like a little boy. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people who are too many to be numbered or counted. So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil. For who is capable of judging this great people of yours? God's answer. Now it was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said to him, Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked for yourself a long life, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have you asked for the lives of your enemies, but have asked for yourself discernment to understand justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. Behold, I have given you a wise and discerning heart, so that there has been no one like you before you, nor shall one like you arise after you. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there will not be any among the kings like you all your days. And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and commandments, as your father David walked, then I will prolong your days. Then Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and made peace offerings, and held a feast for all his servants. Solomon wisely judges. Then two women who were prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. The one woman said, Pardon me, my lord, this woman and I live in the same house. And I gave birth to a child while she was in the house. And it happened on the third day after I gave birth, that this woman also gave birth to a child, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, only the two of us in the house. Then this woman's son died in the night, because she lay on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from beside me while your servant was asleep, and she laid him at her breast, and laid her dead son at my breast. When I got up in the morning to nurse my son, behold, he was dead. But when I examined him closely in the morning, behold, he was not my son, whom I had born. Then the other woman said, No. For the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. But the first woman said, No. For the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. So they spoke before the king. Then the king said, The one says, This is my son who is living, and your son is the dead one. And the other says, No. For your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. And the king said, Get me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Cut the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. But the woman whose child was the living one spoke to the king, for she was deeply stirred over her son, and she said, Pardon me, my lord. Give her the living child, and by no means kill him. But the other woman was saying, He shall be neither mine nor yours. Cut him. Then the king replied, Give the first woman the living child, and by no means kill him. She is his mother. When all Israel heard about the judgment which the king had handed down, they feared the king, because they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice Solomon's officials. Now King Solomon was king over all Israel. These were his officials, as Ari the son of Zedadiok was the priest. Eliorif and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha were scribes. Jehoshaphat the son of Ilud was the secretary. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the army. And Zedadiok and Abertha were priests. And as Ari the son of Nathan was over the deputies. And Zabud the son of Nathan, the priest, was the king's confidant. And Isa was over the household. And Adoniram the son of Abda was over the forced labor. Solomon had twelve deputies over all Israel, who provided food for the king and his household. Each deputy had to provide food for a month in the year. And these were their names, Ben-Ha, in the hill country of Ephraim. Ben-Decker in Makers and Shalbim, and Bethshemesh, and Elan Bethhanan. Ben Hesdin Erubeth Sok was his in all the land of Hepa. Ben Abinadab in all the hills of Dortapath the daughter of Solomon was his wife. Baina the son of Ilud in Tarnash and Midjurdo, 
and all Beth Sheen which is besides Areth and Bilal Jezreel, from Beth Sheen to Abel Mahola as far as the other side of joke meme. Benjamin in Ramoth Chilead the villages of Jeh, the son of Manasseh, which are in Chilead were his, the region of Agob, which is in Bashan, six key great cities with walls and bronze bars were his. Ainadab the son of Ido in Mahanaim. Ainadab is in Naphtali he also married Basemath the daughter of Solomon. Bainah the son of Hushai in Asher and Belath. Jehoshab had the son of Peruah in Issachar. Shemay the son of Ilah in Benjamin. Jba the son of Uri in the land of Jilead, the country of Sin king of the Amorites and the Vog king of Bashan. And he was the only deputy who was in the land. Solomon's power, wealth, and wisdom. Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand that is on the seashore in abundance. They were eating, drinking, and rejoicing. Now Solomon was ruling over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines and to the border of Egypt. They brought tribute and served Solomon all the days of his life. Solomon's provision for one day was thirty acres of fine flour and sixty acres of meal, ten fat oxen, twenty pasture fed oxen, and a hundred sheep, besides deer, gazelles, roebucks, and fattened geese. For he was ruling over everything west of the Euphrates River, from Tips or even to Gaza, over all the kings west of the river. And he had peace on all sides surrounding him. So Judah and Israel lived securely, everyone under his vine and his fig tree, from Dan even to Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. Solomon had forty thousand stalls of horses for his chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen. And those deputies provided food for King Solomon and all who came to King Solomon's table, each in his month. They allowed nothing to be lacking. They also brought barley and straw for the war horses and baggage horses to the place where it was required, each deputy according to his duty. Now God gave Solomon wisdom and very great discernment and breadth of mind, like the sand that is on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the people of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all other people, more than even the Zrahite, Herman, Kalkol, and Dada, the sons of Mahol. And his fame was known in all the surrounding nations. He also told three thousand proverbs, and his songs numbered one thousand and five. He told of trees, from the cedar that is in Lebanon even to the hyssop that grows on the wall. He told also of animals, birds, crawling things, and fish. People came from all the nations to hear the wisdom of Solomon, from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom alliance with King Hiram. Now Hiram king of Tyre sent his servants to Solomon when he heard that they had anointed him king in place of his father, for Hiram had always been a friend of David. Then Solomon sent word to Hiram, saying, You know that David my father was unable to build a house for the name of the Lord his God because of the wars which surrounded him, until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God has secured me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune. So behold, I intend to build a house for the name of the Lord my God, just as the Lord spoke to David my father, saying, Your son, whom I will put on your throne in your place, he will build the house for my name. Now then, issue orders that they cut cedars from Lebanon for me, and my servants will be with your servants. And I will give you wages for your servants in accordance with all that you say. For you yourself know that there is no one among us who knows how to cut timber like the Sidonians. When Hiram heard the words of Solomon, he greatly rejoiced. And he said, Blessed be the Lord today, who has given to David a wise son over this great people. So Hiram sent word to Solomon, saying, I have heard the message which you sent me. I will do everything you wish concerning the cedar and juniper timber. My servants will bring the timbers down from Lebanon to the sea. And I will have them made into rafts to go by sea to the place where you direct me and I will have them broken up there, and you will carry them away. Then you shall do what I wish, by giving food to my household. So Hiram gave Solomon all that he wished of the cedar and juniper timber. Solomon then gave Hiram twenty thousand acres of wheat as food for his household, and twenty acres of pure oil. This is what Solomon would give Hiram year by year. And the Lord gave wisdom to Solomon, just as he promised him. And there was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them made a covenant. Conscription of Laborers now King Solomon conscripted forced laborers from all Israel, and the forced laborers numbered thirty thousand men. Then he sent them to Lebanon, ten thousand a month in shifts. They were in Lebanon for a month, and two months at home. And Adoniram was in charge of the forced laborers. Now Solomon had seventy thousand porters, and eighty thousand stonemasons in the mountains, besides Solomon's three thousand three hundred chief deputies who were in charge of the project and ruled over the people who were doing the work. Then the king issued orders, and they quarried large stones, valuable stones, 
to lay the foundation of the house with cut stones. So Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders and the Jebelites cut the stones, and they prepared the timbers and the stones to build the house, the building of the temple. Now it came about in the 480th year after the sons of Israel came out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, that is, the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. And the house which King Solomon built for the Lord was sixty cubits in its length, and twenty cubits in its width, and its height was thirty cubits. The porch in front of the main room of the house was twenty cubits in length, corresponding to the width of the house and its width along the front of the house was ten cubits. Also for the house he made windows with artistic frames. Against the wall of the house he built stories encompassing the walls of the house around both the main room and the inner sanctuary. So he made side chambers all around. The lowest story was five cubits wide, the middle was six cubits wide, and the third was seven cubits wide. For on the outside he made offsets in the wall of the house all around so that the beams would not be inserted into the walls of the house. The house while it was being built, was built of stone finished at the quarry, and neither hammer, nor axe, nor any iron tool was heard in the house while it was being built. The doorway for the lowest side chamber was on the right side of the house, and they would go up by a winding staircase to the middle story, and from the middle to the third. So he built the house and finished it, and he covered the house with beams and planks of cedar. He also built the stories against the whole house, each five cubits high, and they were attached to the house with timbers of cedar. Now the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, As for this house which you are building, if you will walk in my statutes, and execute my ordinances, and keep all my commandments by walking in them, then I will fulfill my word with you which I spoke to David your father. And I will dwell among the sons of Israel, and will not abandon my people Israel. So Solomon built the house and finished it. He built the walls of the house on the inside with boards of cedar. From the floor of the house to the ceiling he paneled the walls on the inside with wood, and he paneled the floor of the house with boards of juniper. He also built twenty cubits on the rear part of the house with boards of cedar from the floor to the ceiling. He built them for it on the inside as an inner sanctuary, as the most holy place. The house, that is, the main room in front of the inner sanctuary, was forty cubits long. There was cedar inside the house, carved in the shape of gourds and open flowers. Everything was cedar there was no stone visible. Then he prepared an inner sanctuary inside the house in order to place there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. The inner sanctuary was twenty cubits in length, twenty cubits in width, and twenty cubits in height. And he overlaid it with pure gold. He also paneled the altar with cedar. So Solomon overlaid the inside of the house with pure gold. And he extended chains of gold across the front of the inner sanctuary, and he overlaid it with gold. He overlaid the entire house with gold until all the house was finished. Also the entire altar which was by the inner sanctuary he overlaid with gold. And in the inner sanctuary he made two cherubim of olive wood, each ten cubits high. The one wing of the first cherub was five cubits, and the other wing of the first cherub was five cubits. From the end of one wing to the end of the other wing were ten cubits. The second cherub was ten cubits. Both of the cherubim were of the same measurement and the same form. The height of the one cherub was ten cubits, and so was that of the other cherub. He placed the cherubim in the midst of the inner house, and the wings of the cherubim spread out so that the wing of the one was touching the one wall, and the wing of the other cherub was touching the other wall. And their wings were touching end to end in the center of the house. He also overlaid the cherubim with gold. Then he carved all the surrounding walls of the house with engravings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, for the inner and outer sanctuaries. And he overlaid the floor of the house with gold for the inner and outer sanctuaries. And for the entrance of the inner sanctuary he made doors of olive wood, the lintel, and five-sided doorposts. So he made two doors of olive wood, and he carved on them carvings of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, and overlaid them with gold. And he overlaid the cherubim and the palm trees with gold. So too he made for the entrance of the main room four-sided doorposts of olive wood, and two doors of juniper wood. The two leaves of the one door turned on pivots and the two leaves of the other door turned on pivots. He carved on it cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, and he overlaid them with gold plated on the carved work. And he built the inner courtyard with three rows of cut stone and a row of cedar beams. In the fourth year the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid, in the month of Ziv. And in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, that is, the eighth month, the house was finished in all its parts and in accordance with all its plans. 
so he was seven years in building it, Solomon's palace. Now Solomon built his own house over the course of thirteen years, and he finished all of his house. He built the house of the timber from Lebanon. Its length was a hundred cubits, its width fifty cubits, and its height thirty cubits, on four rows of cedar pillars with cedar beams on the pillars. And it was panelled with cedar above the side chambers which were on the forty-five pillars, fifteen in each row. There were artistic window frames in three rows, and window was opposite window at three intervals. And all the doorways and doorposts had squared artistic frames, and window was opposite window at three intervals. Then he made the hall of pillars. Its length was fifty cubits, and its width thirty cubits, and a porch was in front of them and pillars and a threshold in front of them. And he made the hall of the throne where he was to judge, the hall of judgment, and it was panelled with cedar from floor to floor. And his house where he was to live. The other courtyard inward from the hall, was of this same workmanship. He also made a house like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter, whom Solomon had married. All of these were made of valuable stones, of stone cut according to measure, sword with saws, inside and outside. Even from the foundation to the coping, and from the outside to the large courtyard. And the foundation was of valuable stones, large stones, stones of ten cubits and stones of eight cubits. And above were valuable stones cut according to measure, and cedar. So the large courtyard all around had three rows of cut stone and a row of cedar beams as well as the inner courtyard of the house of the Lord, and the porch of the house. Hiram's work in the temple. Now King Solomon sent word and had Hiram brought from Tyre. He was a widow's son from the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, an artisan in bronze. And he was filled with wisdom, skill, and knowledge for doing any work in bronze. So he came to King Solomon and performed all his work. He fashioned the two pillars of bronze. Eighteen cubits was the height of each pillar, and a line of twelve cubits measured the circumference of both. He also made two capitals of cast bronze to put on the tops of the pillars. The height of the one capital was five cubits and the height of the other capital was five cubits. There were lattices of lattice work and wreaths of chain work for the capitals which were on the top of the pillars. Seven for the one capital and seven for the other capital. So he made the pillars, and two rows around on the one lattice to cover the capitals which were on the top of the pomegranates. And so he did for the other capital. The capitals which were on the tops of the pillars in the porch were of lily design, four cubits. So there were capitals on the two pillars, also above and close to the rounded projection which was beside the lattice. And the pomegranates totaled two hundred in rows around both capitals. And he set up the pillars at the porch of the main room, he set up the right pillar and named it Chin and he set up the left pillar and named it Boaz. On the top of the pillars was the lily design. So the work of the pillars was finished. He also he made the sea of cast metal ten cubits from brim to brim, circular in shape, and its height was five cubits, and it was thirty cubits in circumference. Under its brim gourds went around encircling a ten to a cubit, completely surrounding the sea. The gourds were in two rows, cast with the rest. It was standing on twelve oxen, three facing north three facing west, three facing south, and three facing east. And the sea was set on top of them, and all their ear parts turned inward. And it was a hand width thick, and its brim was made like the brim of a cup, like a lily blossom. It could hold two thousand baths. Then he made the tent stands of bronze. The length of each stand was four cubits, its width four cubits, and its height was three cubits. It was the design of the stands, they had borders, that is, borders between the crossbars, and on the borders which were between the crossbars were lions, oxen, and cherubim. And on the crossbars there was a pedestal above, and beneath the lions and oxen were wreaths of hanging work. Now each stand had four bronze wheels with bronze axles, and its four feet had supports. Beneath the basin were cast supports with wreaths at each side. And its opening inside the crown at the top was a cubit, and its opening was round like the design of a pedestal, a cubit and a half. And on its opening also there were engravings and their borders were square, not round. The four wheels were underneath the borders, and the axles of the wheels were on the stand. And the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half. The workmanship of the wheels was like the workmanship of a chariot wheel. Their axles, their rims, their spokes, and their hubs were all cast. Now there were four supports at the four corners of each stand. Its supports were part of the stand itself. And on the top of the stand there was a circular form half a cubit high and on the top of the stand its stays and its borders were part of it. And he engraved on the plates of its stays, and on its borders cherubim, lions, and palm trees, as there was clear space on each, with reeds all around. He made the tent stands like this, 
all of them had the same casting, same measure, and same form. And he made ten basins of bronze, each holding forty baths. Each basin was four cubits, and on each of the ten stands was one basin. Then he placed the stands, five on the right side of the house, and five on the left side of the house. And he set the sea of cast metal on the right side of the house eastward toward the south. Now Hiram made the basins and the shovels and the bowls. So Hiram finished doing all the work which he performed for King Solomon in the house of the Lord. The two pillars and the two bowls of the capitals which were on the top of the two pillars, and the two lattices, to cover the two bowls of the capitals which were on the top of the pillars, and the four hundred pomegranates for the two lattices, two rows of pomegranates for each lattice, to cover the two bowls of the capitals which were on the tops of the pillars, and the ten stands with the ten basins on the stands, and the one sea and the twelve oxen under the sea, and the buckets, the shovels, and the bowls. Indeed, all these utensils which Hiram made for King Solomon in the house of the Lord were of polished bronze. The king had them cast in the plain of the Jordan, in the clay ground between Succoth and Zarethan. However, Solomon left all the utensils unweighed, because there were too many. The weight of the bronze could not be determined. Solomon also made all the furniture that was in the house of the Lord, the golden altar and the golden table on which was set the bread of the presence, and the lampstands of pure gold, five on the right side and five on the left, in front of the inner sanctuary, and the flowers, the lamps, and the tongs, of gold. Also the cups, the shears, the bowls, the ladles, and the fiery pans, of pure gold, and the hinges both for the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house, that is, for the main room, of gold. So all the work that King Solomon performed in the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the offerings vowed by his father David, the silver and the gold and the utensils, and he put them in the treasuries of the house of the Lord the ark brought into the temple. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the father's households of the sons of Israel, to King Solomon in Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the city of David, that is, Zion. So all the men of Israel assembled themselves before King Solomon at the feast, in the month Titanium, that is, the seventh month. Then all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the Ark. And they brought up the Ark of the Lord, the tent of meeting, and all the holy utensils which were in the tent. The priests and the Levites brought them up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel, who were gathered together to him, were with him before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priests brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place, into the inner sanctuary of the house, to the most holy place, under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim made a covering over the ark and its carrying poles from above. But the poles were so long that the ends of the poles could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen outside. They are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone which Moses put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the sons of Israel, when they came out of the land of Egypt. And it happened that when the priests came from the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Solomon addresses the people. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. I have truly built you a lofty house, a place for your dwelling forever. Then the king turned around and blessed all the assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel was standing. He said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to my father David, and fulfilled it with his hands, saying, Since the day that I brought my people Israel from Egypt, I did not choose a city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house so that my name would be there, but I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, Because it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless you shall not build the house, but your son who will be born to you, he will build the house for my name. Now the Lord has fulfilled his word which he spoke. For I have risen in place of my father David, and I sit on the throne of Israel, just as the Lord promised, and I have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. And there I have set a place for the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. The Prayer of Dedication Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and he spread out his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord, God of Israel, 
There is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath. Keeping the covenant and showing faithfulness to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. You who have kept with your servant, my father David, that which you promised him. You have spoken with your mouth and have fulfilled it with your hand, as it is this day. Now then, Lord, God of Israel, keep with your servant David my father that which you have promised him, saying, You shall not be deprived of a man to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your sons are careful about their way, to walk before me as you have walked. Now then, God of Israel, let your words, please, be confirmed, which you have spoken to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house which I have built. Nevertheless, turn your attention to the prayer of your servant and to his plea, Lord, my God, to listen to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you today, so that your eyes may be open toward this house night and day, toward the place of which you have said, My name shall be there, to listen to the prayer which your servant will pray toward this place. And listen to the plea of your servant and of your people Israel, when they pray toward this place. Here in heaven your dwelling place. Hear and forgive. If a person sins against his neighbor and is compelled to take an oath of innocence, and he comes and takes an oath before your altar in this house, then hear in heaven and act and judge your servants, condemning the wicked by bringing his way on his own head, and acquitting the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. When your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you, if they turn to you again and confess your name and pray and implore your favor in this house, then hear in heaven, and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them back to the land which you gave their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against you, and they pray toward this place and praise your name, and turn from their sin when you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and your people Israel. Indeed, teach them the good way in which they are to walk. And provide rain on your land which you have given to your people as inheritance. If there is a famine in the land, if there is a plague, if there is blight or mildew, locust or grasshopper, if their enemy harasses them in the land of their cities, whatever plague, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer or pleas offered by any person or by all your people Israel, each knowing the affliction of his own heart, and spreading his hands toward this house. Then hear in heaven, your dwelling place, and forgive an act, and give to each in accordance with all his ways whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of all mankind, so that they will fear you all the days that they live on the land which you have given to our fathers. Also regarding the foreigner who is not of your people Israel, when he comes from a far country on account of your name. For they will hear of your great name and your mighty hand, and of your outstretched arm. When he comes and prays toward this house, hear in heaven your dwelling place, and act in accordance with all for which the foreigner calls to you in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name, to fear you, as your people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by your name. When your people go out to battle against their enemy, by whatever way you send them, and they pray to the Lord toward the city which you have chosen and the house which I have built for your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their pleading, and maintain their cause. When they sin against you for there is no person who does not sin and you are angry with them on turn them over to an enemy, so that they take them away captive to the land of the enemy distant or near. If they take it to heart in the land where they have been taken captive, and repent and implore your favor in the land of those who have taken them captive, saying, We have sinned and done wrong. We have acted wickedly. If they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of the enemies who have taken them captive, and pray to you toward their land which you have given to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and the house which I have built for your name, then hear their prayer and their pleading in heaven, your dwelling place and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you in all their wrongdoings which they have committed against you, and make them objects of compassion before those who have taken them captive, so that they will have compassion on them. For they are your people and your inheritance which you have brought out of Egypt, from the midst of the iron furnace, so that your eyes may be open to the pleading of your servant and to the pleading of your people Israel, to listen to them whenever they call to you. For you have singled them out from all the peoples of the earth as your inheritance just as you spoke through Moses your servant, when you brought our fathers out of Egypt, Lord God. Solomon's Benediction When Solomon had finished praying this entire prayer and plea to the Lord, he stood up from the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread toward heaven. And he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel in accordance with everything that he promised.
Not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he promised through Moses his servant. May the Lord our God be with us, as he was with our fathers. May he not leave us nor forsake us, so that he may guide our hearts toward himself, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his ordinances, which he commanded our fathers. And may these words of mine, with which I have implored the favor of the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night so that he will maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel, as each day requires, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God. There is no one else. Your hearts therefore shall be wholly devoted to the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments, as at this day. Dedicatory Sacrifices Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. And Solomon offered for the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered to the Lord. 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the sons of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. On the same day the king consecrated the middle of the courtyard that was in front of the house of the Lord, because there he offered the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the fat of the peace offerings. For the bronze order that was before the Lord was too small to hold the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the fat of the peace offerings. So Solomon held the feast at that time, and all Israel with him a great assembly from the entrance of Hermath to the brook of Egypt, before the Lord our God, for seven days and seven more days, that is, fourteen days. On the eighth day he dismissed the people, and they blessed the king. Then they went to their tents joyful and with happy hearts for all the goodness that the Lord had shown to David his servant, and to Israel his people God's promise and warning. Now it came about when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that Solomon desired to do that the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time, as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your plea which you have offered before me. I have consecrated this house which you have built, by putting my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there always. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of heart and honesty, acting in accordance with everything that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever, just as I promised to your father David, saying, You shall not be deprived of a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons indeed turn away from following me, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have placed before you, but you go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut Israel off from the land which I have given them, and the house which I have consecrated for my name, I will expel from my sight. So Israel will become a saying and an object of derision among all peoples. And this house will become a heap of ruins. Everyone who passes by it will be appalled and hiss and say, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this land and this house? And they will say, Because they abandoned the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and they adopted other gods and worshipped and served them. For that reason the Lord has brought all this adversity on them. Cities given to Hiram. Now it came about at the end of twenty years in which Solomon had built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. Hiram king of Tyre had supplied Solomon with cedar and juniper timber and gold, satisfying all his desire, that king Solomon then gave Hiram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. So Hiram left Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him, and they did not please him. And he said, What are these cities which you have given me, my brother? So they have been called the land of Kabul to this day. And Hiram sent to the king 120 talents of gold. Now this is the account of the forced labor which King Solomon conscripted to build the house of the Lord, his own house, the Milo, the wall of Jerusalem, Hazor, Mijurdo, and Jizah. For Pharaoh king of Egypt had gone up and overthrown Jizah and burned it with fire, and killed the Canaanites who lived in the city, and he had given it as a dowry to his daughter, Solomon's wife. So Solomon rebuilt Jizah in the lower Beth Horon and Baalath and Timah in the wilderness, in the land of Judah, and all the storage cities which Solomon had, that is, the cities for his chariots and the cities for his horsemen, and everything that it pleased Solomon to build in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land under his rule. As for all the people who were left of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, who were not of the sons of Israel, their descendants who were left after them in the land, whom the sons of Israel were unable to completely eliminate, from them Solomon conscripted forced laborers, as they are to this day. But Solomon did not make slaves of the sons of Israel. For there were men of war, his servants, his commanders, his charioteers, his chariot commanders, and his horsemen. These were the chief officers who were in charge of Solomon's work, 
550, who ruled over the people doing the work. As soon as Pharaoh's daughter came up from the city of David to her house which Solomon had built for her, he then built the mellow. Now three times a year Solomon offered burnt offerings and peace offerings on the altar which he had built for the Lord, burning incense with them on the altar which was before the Lord. So he finished the house. King Solomon also built a fleet of ships in Zionshba, which is near Elath on the shore of the Red Sea, in the land of Adam. And Hiram sent his servants with the fleet, sailors who knew the sea, along with the servants of Solomon. And they went to Ophir and received 420 talents of gold from there, and brought it to King Solomon the Queen of Sheba. Now when the Queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon in relation to the name of the Lord, she came to test him with riddles. So she came to Jerusalem with a very large entourage, with camels carrying balsam oil and a very large quantity of gold and precious stones. When she came to Solomon, she spoke to him about everything that was in her heart. And Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was concealed from the king which he did not explain to her. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon, and the house that he had built, and the food of his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters and their attire, his cupbearers, and his burnt offerings which he offered at the house of the Lord, she was breathless. Then she said to the king, It was a true story that I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. But I did not believe the stories until I came and my own eyes saw it all. And behold, the half of it was not reported to me. You have exceeded in wisdom and prosperity the report which I heard. Blessed are your men, and blessed are these servants of yours who stand before you continually and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God who delighted in you to put you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loves Israel forever, he made you king, to do justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, and a very large amount of balsam oil and precious stones. Never again did such a large quantity of balsam oil come in as that which the queen of Sheba gave King Solomon. And the ships of Hiram as well, which brought gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir a very great number of all among trees and precious stones. The king made from the all among trees supports for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, and lyres and harps for the singers. Such all among trees have not come in again, nor have they been seen to this day. And King Solomon granted the queen of Sheba everything she desired, whatever she requested besides what he gave her in proportion to his royal bounty. Then she departed and went to her own land together with her servants. Wealth, splendor, and wisdom. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold. Besides that from the traders, and the wares of the merchants, and all the kings of the Arabs, and the governors of the country. King Solomon made 200 large shields of beaten gold, using 600 shekels of gold on each large shield and he made three hundred small shields of beaten gold, using three minas of gold on each shield. And the king put them in the house of the timber of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a large throne of ivory, and overlaid it with fine gold. There were six steps to the throne, and a round top to the throne at its back, and armorists on each side of the seat, and two lions standing beside the armorists. Twelve lions were standing there on the six steps on the one side and on the other. Nothing like it was made for any other kingdom. Now all King Solomon's drinking utensils were of gold, and all the utensils of the house of the timber of Lebanon were of pure gold. None was of silver. It was not considered as amounting to anything in the days of Solomon. For the king had the ships of Tarshish at sea with Hiram's ships. Once every three years the ships of Tarshish would come carrying gold and silver, ivory, monkers, and peacocks. So King Solomon became greater than all the kings of the earth in wealth and wisdom. And all the earth was seeking the attention of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. And they were bringing, every one, a gift, articles of silver and gold, garments, weapons, balsam oil, horses, and mules, so much year by year. Now Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen. And he had fourteen hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, and he stationed them in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. And the king made silver as common as stones in Jerusalem and he made a cedars as plentiful as sycamore trees that are in the lowland. Also Solomon's import of horses was from Egypt and Ku, and the king's merchants acquired them from Ku for a price. A chariot was imported from Egypt for six hundred shekels of silver, and a horse for a hundred and fifty, and by the same means they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites, and to the kings of the Arameans. Solomon turns from God. Now King Solomon loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabit, Ammonite, Adamite, Sidonian, and Hittite women. From the nations of which the Lord had said to the sons of Israel, You shall not associate with them, 
nor shall they associate with you. They will certainly turn your heart away to follow their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. He had seven hundred wives, who were princesses, and three hundred concubines. And his wives turned his heart away. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away to follow other gods. And his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of his father David had been. For Solomon became a follower of Ishtoreth the goddess of the Sidonians, and of Milcom the abhorrent idol of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not follow the Lord fully, as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abhorrent idol of Moab, on the mountain that is east of Jerusalem, and for Melech, the abhorrent idol of the sons of Ammon. He also did the same for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Now the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him regarding this thing, that he was not to follow other gods. But he did not comply with what the Lord had commanded. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since you have done this, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will certainly tear the kingdom away from you, and will give it to your servant. However, I will not do it in your days, only for the sake of your father David but I will tear it away from the hand of your son. Yet I will not tear away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. God raises adversaries. Then the Lord raised up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad the Adamite. He was of the royal line in Adam. For it came about, when David was in Adam and Joab the commander of the army had gone up to bury those killed in battle, and had struck and killed every male in Adam. For Joab and all Israel stayed there for six months, until he had eliminated every male in Adam. That Hadad fled to Egypt, he and certain Adamites of his father's servants with him, while Hadad was a young boy. They set out from Midian and came to Paran. And they took men with them from Paran and came to Egypt, to Pharaoh king of Egypt, who gave him a house and assigned him food and gave him land. Now Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him in marriage the sister of his own wife, the sister of Darpens the queen. And the sister of Darpins gave birth to his son Janabath, whom Darpins weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Janabath was in Pharaoh's house among the sons of Pharaoh. But when Hadad heard in Egypt that David lay down with his fathers, and that Joab the commander of the army was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me go, so that I may go to my own country. However, Pharaoh said to him, But what have you lacked with me that you are here, requesting to go to your own country? And he answered, Nothing. Nevertheless you must let me go. God also raised up another adversary against him, Rezin the son of Eliada, who had fled from his master Hadadizah, king of Zobar. And he gathered men to himself and became leader of a marauding band, after David killed those of Zobar. And they went to Damascus and stayed there, and reigned in Damascus. So he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, along with the harm that Hadad inflicted. And he felt disgust for Israel and reigned over Aram. Then Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and Ephraim of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow, also rebelled against the king. Now this was the reason why he rebelled against the king, Solomon built the millow, and closed up the breach of the city of his father David. Now the man Jeroboam was a valiant warrior, and when Solomon saw that the young man was industrious, he appointed him over all the forced labor of the house of Joseph. And it came about at that time, when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him on the road. Now Ahijah had clothed himself with a new cloak. And both of them were alone in the field. Then Ahijah took hold of the new cloak which was on him and tore it into twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, Behold, I am going to tear the kingdom away from the hand of Solomon and give you ten tribes. But he shall have one tribe, for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen from all the tribes of Israel because they have abandoned me, and have worshipped Ashtoreth the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh the god of Moab, and Milcom the god of the sons of Ammon. And they have not walked in my ways, doing what is right in my sight, and keeping my statutes and my ordinances, as his father David did. Nevertheless I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him ruler all the days of his life, for the sake of my servant David whom I chose, who kept my commandments and my statutes but I will take the kingdom from his son's hand and give it to you. That is, ten tribes. But to his son I will give one tribe, so that my servant David may always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city where I have chosen for myself to put my name.
However I will take you, and you shall reign over all that you desire, and you shall be king over Israel. Then it shall be, that if you listen to all that I command you and walk in my ways, and do what is right in my sight by keeping my statutes and my commandments, as my servant David did, then I will be with you and build you an enduring house as I built for David, and I will give Israel to you. So I will oppress the descendants of David for this, but not always. Solomon sought therefore to put Jeroboam to death. But Jeroboam set out and fled to Egypt to Shishak king of Egypt, and he was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. The death of Solomon. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon and whatever he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the acts of Solomon? So the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. Then Solomon lay down with his fathers and was buried in the city of his father David, and his son Hoboam reigned in his place. King Hoboam acts foolishly. Then Hoboam went to Shechem, because all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. Now when Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard about this, he was living in Egypt for he was still in Egypt, where he had fled from the presence of King Solomon. Then they sent word and summoned him, and Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and spoke to Hoboam, saying, Your father made a yoke hard. But now, lighten the hard labor imposed by your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us, and we will serve you. Then he said to them, Depart for three days, then return to me. So the people departed. And King Hoboam consulted with the elders who had served his father Solomon while he was still alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? Then they spoke to him, saying, If you will be a servant to this people today, and will serve them and grant them their request, and speak pleasant words to them, then they will be your servants always. But he ignored the advice of the elders which they had given him, and consulted with the young men who had grown up with him and served him. He said to them, What advice do you give, so that we may answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us. And the young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, this is what you should say to this people who spoke to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, now you make it lighter for us. You should speak this way to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Now then, my father loaded you with a heavy yoke. Yet I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. Then Jeroboam and all the people came to Hoboam on the third day, just as the king had directed, saying, Return to me on the third day. And the king answered the people harshly, for he ignored the advice of the elders which they had given him. And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, because it was a turn of events from the Lord, in order to establish his word which the Lord spoke through Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. The kingdom divided. Jeroboam rules Israel. When all Israel saw that the king had not listened to them, the people replied to the king, saying, What share do we have in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, Israel. Now look after your own house, David. So Israel went away to their tents. But as for the sons of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah, Hoboam reigned over them. Then King Hoboam sent to Doram, who was in charge of the forced labor, and all Israel stoned him to death. And King Hoboam hurried to mount his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has broken with the house of David to this day. And it came about, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, that they sent word and called him to the assembly, and made him king over all Israel. None except the tribe of Judah alone followed the house of David. Now when Hoboam had come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen warriors to fight against the house of Israel to restore the kingdom to Hoboam the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemaiah the man of God, saying, Tell Hoboam the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and the rest of the people, saying, This is what the Lord says, You shall not go up nor fight against your relatives the sons of Israel. Return, every man to his house, for this thing has come from me. So they listened to the word of the Lord, and returned to go their way in accordance with the word of the Lord. Jeroboam's idolatry. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, and lived there. And he went out from there and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will return to the house of David. If this people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will return to their Lord, to Hoboam king of Judah. And they will kill me and return to Hoboam king of Judah. So the king consulted, and he made two golden calves. 
and he said to the people, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold your gods, Israel, that brought you up from the land of Egypt. And he set up one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. Now this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one as far as Dan. And he made houses on high places, and appointed priests from all the people who were not of the sons of Levi. Jeroboam also instituted a feast in the eighth month on the fifteenth day of the month, like the feast that is in Judah, and he went up to the altar. So he did in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves which he had made. And he stationed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. Then he went up to the altar which he had made in Bethel on the fifteenth day in the eighth month, the month that he had devised in his own heart. And he instituted a feast for the sons of Israel and went up to the altar to burn incense. Jeroboam warned, stricken. Now behold, a man of God came from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord, while Jeroboam was standing at the altar to burn incense. And he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, Altar, altar, this is what the Lord says, Behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name. And on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you, and human bones shall burn on you. Then he gave a sign on the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken, Behold, the altar shall be torn to pieces and the ashes which are on it shall be poured out. Now when the king heard the statement of the man of God, which he cried out against the altar in Bethel, Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him. But his hand which he had stretched out toward him dried up, and he could not draw it back to himself. The altar also was torn to pieces and the ashes were poured out from the altar, in accordance with the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king responded and said to the man of God, Please appease the Lord your God and pray for me, so that my hand may be restored to me. So the man of God appeased the Lord. And the king's hand was restored to him, and it became as it was before. Then the king said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a gift. But the man of God said to the king, If you were to give me half your house, I would not go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall not eat bread nor drink water, nor return by the way that you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way that he had come to Bethel. The Disobedient Prophet Now an old prophet was living in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the deeds which the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken to the king, these also they reported to their father. And their father said to them, Which way did he go? Now his sons had seen the way that the man of God who came from Judah had gone. Then he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him and he rode away on it. So he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. But he said, I cannot return with you, nor come with you, nor will I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. For a command came to me by the word of the Lord, You shall not eat bread, nor drink water there. Do not return by going the way that you came. Then he said to him, I too am a prophet like you, and an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. So he went back with him, and ate bread in his house and drank water. Now it came about, as they were sitting down at the table, that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah, saying, This is what the Lord says. Because you have disobeyed the command of the Lord and have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but have returned and eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which he said to you, You are not to eat bread nor drink water. Your dead body will not come to the grave of your fathers. It came about after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled the donkey for him, for the prophet whom he had brought back. Now when he had gone, a lion met him on the way and killed him, and his body was thrown on the road, with the donkey standing beside it. The lion also was standing beside the body. And behold, men passed by and saw the body thrown on the road, and the lion standing beside the body. So they came and told about it in the city where the old prophet had lived. Now when the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard about it, he said, It is the man of God, who disobeyed the command of the Lord. Therefore the Lord has given him to the lion, which has torn him and killed him, in accordance with the word of the Lord which he spoke to him. Then he spoke to his sons, saying, Saddle the donkey for me. And they saddled it. Then he went and found his body thrown on the road, with the donkey and the lion standing beside the body. 
The lion had not eaten the body nor harmed the donkey. So the prophet picked up the body of the man of God and laid it on the donkey and brought it back. And he came to the city of the old prophet to mourn and to bury him. He laid his body in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Oh, my brother. And after he had buried him, he talked to his sons, saying, When I die, bury me in the grave in which the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the thing will certainly come to pass which he cried out by the word of the Lord against the altar that is in Bethel, and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria. After this event, Jeroboam did not abandon his evil way but he again appointed priests of the high places from all the people. Anyone who wanted, he ordained, and he became one of the priests of the high places. This event also became a sin of the house of Jeroboam, even to wipe it out and eliminate it from the face of the earth. Ahijah prophesies against the king. At that time Abijah the son of Jeroboam became sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Now arise and disguise yourself so that they will not know that you are the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Shil. Behold, Ahijah the prophet is there who said regarding me that I would be king over this people. Take ten loaves with you, some pastries, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what will happen to the boy. And Jeroboam's wife did so, and set out and went to Shil, and came to the house of Ahijah. Now Ahijah could not see because his eyes were glossy from his old age. Now the Lord had said to Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam is coming to inquire of you about her son, because he is sick. You shall say such and such to her for it will be when she arrives, that she is going to make herself unrecognizable. So when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet coming in the doorway, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you make yourself unrecognizable? Nevertheless, I am sent to you with a harsh message. Go, say to Jeroboam, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, Because I exalted you from among the people and made you leader over my people Israel, and tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you. Yet you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart, to do only that which was right in my sight. You also have done more evil than all who were before you, and you have gone and made for yourself other gods and cast metal images to provoke me to anger, and have thrown me behind your back. Therefore behold, I am bringing disaster on the house of Jeroboam, and I will eliminate from Jeroboam every male person, both bond and free in Israel, and I will make a clean sweep of the house of Jeroboam just as one sweeps away dung until it is all gone. Anyone belonging to Jeroboam who dies in the city, the dogs will eat. And anyone who dies in the field, the birds of the sky will eat. For the Lord has spoken it. Now you, arise, go to your house. When your feet enter the city the child will die. Then all Israel will mourn for him and bury him, for he alone of Jeroboam's family will come to the grave, because in him something good was found toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel who will eliminate the house of Jeroboam this day and from now on. For the Lord will strike Israel, just as a reed sways in the water. And he will uproot Israel from this good land which he gave to their fathers, and will scatter them beyond the Euphrates river, because they have made the Asherim, provoking the Lord to anger. He will give up Israel, because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he committed and with which he misled Israel into sin. Then Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tizer. As she was entering the threshold of the house, the child died. Then all Israel buried him on mourn for him, in accordance with the word of the Lord which he had spoken through his servant Ahijah the prophet. Now as for the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he made war and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. And the time that Jeroboam reigned was twenty-two years. And he lay down with his fathers, and his son Nadab reigned in his place. Hoboam misleads Judah. Now Hoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Hoboam was forty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned for seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen from all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naamah the Ammonites. And the people of Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins which they committed, more than all that their fathers had done. For they, too, built for themselves high places, memorial stones and Asherim on every high hill and under every luxuriant tree. There were also male cult prostitutes in the land. They committed all the same abominations of the nations which the Lord dispossessed before the sons of Israel. Now it happened in the fifth year of King Hoboam, that Shishik the king of Egypt marched against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house, and he took everything.
He even took all the shields of God which Solomon had made. So King Hobo made shields of bronze in their place, and entrusted them to the care of the commanders of the guard who guarded the doorway of the king's house. And it happened as often as the king entered the house of the Lord, that the guards would carry them and would bring them back into the guest room. Now as for the rest of the acts of Hobo and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Hoboam and Jeroboam continually. And Hoboam lay down with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And his mother's name was Naamah the Ammonites. And his son Abjam became king in his place. Abjam reigns over Judah. Now in the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abjam became king over Judah. He reigned for three years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Maka the daughter of Abis Halom. He walked in all the sins of his father which he had committed before him. And his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God, like the heart of his father David. But for David's sake the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem, to raise up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Because David did what was right in the sight of the Lord, and did not deviate from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the case of Uriah the Hittite. And there was war between Hoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. Now as for the rest of the acts of Abjam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Abjam and Jeroboam. Asa succeeds Abjam. And Abjam lay down with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And his son Asa became king in his place. So in the twentieth year of Jeroboam the king of Israel, Asa began to reign as king of Judah. He reigned for forty-one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Maka the daughter of Abis Halom. Now Asa did what was right in the sight of the Lord, like his father David. He also removed the male cult prostitutes from the land and removed all the idols which his fathers had made. And even his mother Maka, he also removed her from the position of queen mother, because she had made an abominable image as in Asherah. And Asa cut down her abominable image and burned it at the brook Kidron. But the high places were not eliminated. Nevertheless Asa's heart was wholly devoted to the Lord all his days. And he brought into the house of the Lord the holy gifts of his father and his own holy gifts, silver, gold, and valuable utensils. Now there was war between Asa and Baasha king of Israel all their days. Baasha king of Israel marched against Judah and fortified Rana in order to prevent anyone from going out or coming in to Asa king of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and the gold that was left in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the treasuries of the king's house, and handed it over to his servants. And King Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad the son of Tabriman, the son of Hazion, king of Aram, who lived in Damascus, saying, Let's make a treaty between you and me, as there was between my father and your father. Behold, I have sent you a gift of silver and gold. Go, break your treaty with Baasha king of Israel so that he will withdraw from me. So Ben-Hadad listened to King Asa and sent the commanders of his armies against the cities of Israel, and conquered John, Dan, Abel Beth Maka, and Orchinaroth besides all the land of Naphtali. When Baasha heard about it, he stopped fortifying Ramah and remained in Tiza. Then King Asa made a proclamation to all Judah, no one was exempt, and they carried away the stones of Ramah and its timber with which Baasha had built fortifications. And King Asa built with them Jeber of Benjamin and Mizpah. Jehoshaphat succeeds Asa. Now as for the rest of all the acts of Asa and all his might, and all that he did in the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? But in the time of his old age he was diseased in his feet. And Asa lay down with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of his father David. And his son Jehoshaphat reigned in his place. Nadab and then Baasha rule over Israel. Now Nadab the son of Jeroboam became king over Israel in the second year of Asa king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel for two years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father and in his sin into which he misled Israel. Then Baasha the son of Ahijah of the house of Issachar conspired against him, and Baasha struck and killed him at Jabethan, which belonged to the Philistines, while Nadab and all Israel were laying siege to Jabethan. So Baasha killed him in the third year of Asa king of Judah, and reigned in his place. And as soon as he was king, he struck and killed all the household of Jeroboam. He did not leave Jeroboam any persons alive, but kept killing until he had eliminated them in accordance with the word of the Lord which he spoke by his servant Ahijah the Shilonite, and because of the sins of Jeroboam which he committed, and into which he misled Israel, because of his provocation with which he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. Now as for the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? War with Judah. 
and there was war between Asa and Baasha king of Israel all their days. In the third year of Asa king of Judah, Baasha the son of Ahijah became king over all Israel at Tizah, and he reigned for twenty-four years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin into which he misled Israel, prophecy against Baasha. Now the word of the Lord came to Jehu the son of Hanani against Baasha, saying, Since I exalted you from the dust, and made you leader over my people Israel, and you have walked in the way of Jeroboam, and have misled my people Israel into sin, provoking me to anger with their sins, behold, I am going to burn Baasha and his house, and I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Anyone belonging to Baasha who dies in the city, the dogs will eat. And anyone belonging to him who dies in the field, the birds of the sky will eat. Now as for the rest of the acts of Baasha and what he did and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? The Israelite kings. And Baasha lay down with his fathers and was buried in Tizah, and his son Elah became king in his place. Moreover, the word of the Lord through the prophet Jehu the son of Hanani came against Baasha and his household both because of all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger with the work of his hands, by being like the house of Jeroboam, and because he struck it. In the twenty-sixth year of Asa king of Judah, Elah the son of Bash became king over Israel at Tizah, and reigned for two years. And his servant Zimri, commander of half his chariots, conspired against him. Now Elah was in Tizah drinking himself drunk in the house of Uzzah, who was in charge of the household in Tizah. Then Zimri came in and struck him on put him to death in the twenty-seventh year of Asa king of Judah, and he became king in his place. And when he became king, as soon as he sat on his throne, he killed all the household of Baasha. He did not leave a single male alive, either of his relatives or of his friends. So Zimri eliminated all the household of Baasha, in accordance with the word of the Lord which he spoke against Baasha through Jehu the prophet, for all the sins of Baasha and the sins of his son Elah, which they committed and into which they misled Israel provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now as for the rest of the acts of Elah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? In the twenty-seventh year of Asa king of Judah, Zimri reigned for seven days in Tizah. Now the people were camped against Jebethan, which belonged to the Philistines. And the people who were camped heard it being said, Zimri has conspired and has also struck and killed the king. Therefore all Israel made Omri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that day in the camp. Then Omri and all Israel with him went up from Jebethan and besieged Tizah. When Zimri saw that the city was taken, he went into the citadel of the king's house and burned the king's house over himself with fire, and died, because of his sins which he committed, doing evil in the sight of the Lord, walking in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin which he committed, misleading Israel into sin. Now as for the rest of the acts of Zimri and his conspiracy which he carried out, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? Then the people of Israel were divided into two parts, half of the people followed Tibni the son of Genath, to make him king. The other half followed Omri. But the people who followed Omri prevailed over the people who followed Tibni the son of Genath. And Tibni died and Omri became king. In the thirty-first year of Asa king of Judah, Omri became king over Israel and reigned for twelve years. He reigned for six years at Tizah. And he purchased the hill Samaria from Shema for two talents of silver. And he built on the hill, and named the city which he built Samaria, after the name of Shema, the owner of the hill. Now Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord, and acted more wickedly than all who were before him. For he walked entirely in the way of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and in his sins into which he misled Israel, provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with the idols. Now as for the rest of the acts of Omri which he did in his might which he displayed, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Omri lay down with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria, and his son Ahab became king in his place. Now Ahab the son of Omri became king over Israel in the thirty-eighth year of Asa king of Judah, and Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel in Samaria for twenty-two years. Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. And as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, he married Jezebel the daughter of Ethbaal king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal, and worshipped him. So he erected an altar for Baal at the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. Ahab also made the Asherah. So Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days he the Bethelit rebuilt Jericho. He laid its foundations with the loss of Abiram his firstborn, and set up its gates with the loss of his youngest son Shagub, in accordance with the word of the Lord.
which he spoke by Joshua the son of Nun. Elijah predicts drought. Now Elijah the Tishbit, who was of the settlers of Jilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall certainly be neither dew nor rain during these years, except by my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go away from here and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. And it shall be that you will drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to provide food for you there. So he went and did everything according to the word of the Lord, for he went and lived by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he would drink from the brook. But it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and stay there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide food for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the entrance of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please get me a little water in the cup, so that I may drink. As she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have no food, only a handful of flour in the bowl and a little oil in the jar. And behold, I am gathering a few sticks so that I may go in and prepare it for me and my son, so that we may eat it and die. However, Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go, do as you have said. Just make me a little bread loaf from it first and bring it out to me, and afterward you may make one for yourself and for your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The bowl of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil become empty, until the day that the Lord provides rain on the face of the earth. So she went and did everything in accordance with the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bowl of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil become empty in accordance with the word of the Lord, which he spoke through Elijah. Elijah raises the widow's son. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became sick, and his condition became very grave, until at the end he was no longer breathing. So she said to Elijah, Why is my business any of yours, you man of God? Yet you have come to me to bring my wrongdoing to remembrance, and to put my son to death. But he said to her, Give me your son. Then he took him from her arms, and carried him up to the upstairs room where he was living, and laid him on his own bed. And he called to the Lord and said, Lord, my God, have you also brought catastrophe upon the widow with whom I am staying, by causing her son to die? Then he stretched himself out over the boy three times, and called to the Lord and said, Lord, my God, please, let this boy's life return to him. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the boy returned to him and he revived. Elijah then took the boy and brought him down from the upstairs room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. Obadiah meets Elijah. Now it happened after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will provide rain on the face of the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria. Ahab summoned Obadiah, who was in charge of the household. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifties in a cave, and provided them with bread and water. Then Ahab said to Obadiah, Go through the land to all the springs of water and to all the river valleys. Perhaps we will find grass and keep the horses and mules alive, and not have to kill some of the cattle. So they divided the land between them to survey it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. Now as Obadiah was on the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he recognized him on fell on his face and said, Is it you, Elijah my master? And he said to him, It is I go, say to your master, Behold, Elijah is here. But he said, What sin have I committed, that you are handing your servant over to Ahab, to put me to death? As surely as the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom to which my master has not sent word to search for you. And whenever they say, He is not here, he makes the kingdom or nation swear that they could not find you. Yet now you are saying, Go, say to your master, Behold, a leader is here. And it will come about when I leave you that the Spirit of the Lord will carry you to where I do not know. So when I come and inform Ahab and he cannot find you, he will kill me, though I, your servant, have feared the Lord from my youth. Has it not been reported to my master what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, 
that I hid a hundred prophets of the Lord by fifties in a cave, and provided them with bread and water? Yet now you are saying, Go, say to your master, Behold, Elijah is here. He will then kill me. Then Elijah said, As surely as the Lord of armies lives, before whom I stand, I will certainly present myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and informed him. Then Ahab went to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is this you, the cause of disaster to Israel? He said, I have not brought disaster to Israel, but you and your father's house have, because you have abandoned the commandments of the Lord and you have followed the Baals. Now then, send orders and gather to me all Israel at Mount Carmel, together with 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of the Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. God or Baal on Mount Carmel. So Ahab sent orders among all the sons of Israel and brought the prophets together at Mount Carmel. Then Elijah approached all the people and said, How long are you going to struggle with the two choices? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people did not answer him so much as a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left as a prophet of the Lord, while Baal's prophets are 450 men. Now have them give us two oxen, and have them choose the one ox for themselves and cut it up, and place it on a wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other ox and lay it on a wood, and I will not put a fire under it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. And all the people replied, That is a good idea. So Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose the one ox for yourselves and prepare it first, since there are many of you, and call on the name of your God but put no fire under the ox. Then they took the ox which was given them and they prepared it, and they called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice and no one answered. And they limped about the order which they had made. And at noon Elijah ridiculed them on said, Call out with a loud voice, since he is a god. Undoubtedly he is attending to business, or is on the way, or is on a journey. Perhaps he is asleep, and will awaken. So they cried out with a loud voice, and cut themselves according to their custom with swords and lances until blood gushed out on them. When midday was past, they raved until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice, no one answered, and no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come forward to me. So all the people came forward to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, which has been torn down. Then Elijah took twelve stones corresponding to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two measures of seed. Then he laid out the wood, and he cut the ox in pieces and placed it on the wood. And he said, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And he said, Do it a second time, so they did it a second time. Then he said, do it a third time, so they did it a third time. The water flowed around the altar, and he also filled the trench with water. Elijah's Prayer Then at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet approached and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, Lord, are God and that you have turned their heart back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering in the wood, and the stones and the dust. And it licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell on their faces. And they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Then Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slaughtered them there. Now Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink. For there is the sound of the roar of a heavy shower. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. But Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he bent down to the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked, but he said, There is nothing. Yet Elijah said, Go back seven times. And when he returned the seventh time, he said, Behold, a cloud as small as a person's hand is coming up from the sea. And Elijah said, Go up, say to Ahab, Harness your chariot horses and go down, so that the heavy shower does not stop you. Meanwhile the sky became dark with clouds and wind came up, and there was a heavy shower. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel.
Then the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he belted his cloak around his waist and outran Ahab to Jezreel. Elijah flees from Jezebel. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me and more so, if by about this time tomorrow I do not make your life like the life of one of them. And he was afraid, and got up and ran for his life, and came to be Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. And he left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked for himself to die, and said, Enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then he lay down and fell asleep under a broom tree. But behold, there was an angel touching him, and he said to him, Arise, eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a round loaf of bread baked on hot coals, and a pitcher of water. So he ate and drank, and lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him, and said, Arise, eat, because the journey is too long for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he journeyed in the strength of that food for forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mountain of God. Elijah at Horeb. Then he came there to a cave and spent the night there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of armies. For the sons of Israel have abandoned your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and they have sought to take my life. So he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord and behold, the Lord was passing by. And a great and powerful wind was tearing out the mountains and breaking the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind there was an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of a gentle blowing. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Then he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of armies. For the sons of Israel have abandoned your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword and I alone am left, and they have sought to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you have arrived, you shall anoint Hazael king over Aram. You shall also anoint Jehu the son of Nimshi king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Maholah as prophet in your place. And it shall come about that the one who escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall put to death, and the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall put to death. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha the son of Shaphat while he was plowing, with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him, and he with the twelfth. And Elijah came over to him and threw his cloak on him. Then he left the oxen behind and ran after Elijah, and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back, for what have I done to you? So he returned from following him and took the pair of oxen and sacrificed them, and cooked their meat with the implements of the oxen, and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he got up and followed Elijah and served him war with Aram. Now Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, gathered all his army, and there were thirty-two kings with him, and horses and chariots. And he went up and besieged Samaria, and fought against it. Then he sent messengers to the city to Ahab, king of Israel, and said to him, This is what Ben-Hadad says, Your silver and your gold are mine. Your most beautiful wives and children are also mine. And the king of Israel replied, As you say, my lord, O king, I am yours, as well as all that I have. Then the messengers returned and said, Ben-Hadad says this, I did indeed send word to you, saying, You shall give me your silver, your gold, your wives, and your children. But about this time tomorrow I will send my servants to you, and they will search your house and the houses of your servants and they will take in their hands everything that is pleasing to your eyes, and take it all away. Then the king of Israel summoned all the elders of the land and said, Please be aware and see that this man is looking for trouble. For he sent me his demand for my wives, my children, my silver, and my gold, and I did not refuse him. Then all the elders and all the people said to him, Do not listen nor consent. So he said to the messengers of Ben-Hadad, Tell my lord the king, everything that you sent as a demand to your servant at the first, I will do but this thing I cannot do. Then the messengers departed, and brought him word again. 
Then Hadad sent word to him on said, May the gods do so to me and more so, if the dust of Samaria will be enough for handfuls for all the people who follow me. Then the king of Israel replied, Tell him, he who straps on his weapons had better not boast like one who takes them off. And when Ben Hadad heard this message, while he was drinking with the kings in the temporary shelters, he said to his servants, Take your positions. So they took their positions against the city. Ahab victorious. Now behold, a prophet approached Ahab king of Israel, and said, This is what the Lord says, Have you seen all this great multitude? Behold, I am going to hand them over to you today, and you shall know that I am the Lord. But Ahab said, By whom? So he said, The Lord says this, By the young men of the leaders of the provinces. Then he said, Who will begin the battle? And he said, You will. So he mustered the young men of the leaders of the provinces, and there were two hundred and thirty-two. And after them he mustered all the people, all the sons of Israel, seven thousand. They went out at noon, while Ben-Hadad was drinking himself drunk in the temporary shelters with the thirty-two kings who were helping him. The young men of the leaders of the provinces went out first. And Ben-Hadad sent out scouts, and they reported to him, saying, Men have come out from Samaria. Then he said, If they have come out for peace, take them alive or if they have come out for war, take them alive as well. So these men went out from the city, the young men of the leaders of the provinces, and the army which followed them. And they killed, each one, his man. And the Arameans fled and Israel pursued them, and Ben-Hadad the king of Aram escaped on a horse with horsemen. The king of Israel also went out and struck the horses and chariots, and killed the Arameans in a great slaughter. Then the prophet approached the king of Israel and said to him, Go. Show yourself courageous, and be aware and see what you have to do. For at the turn of the year the king of Aram will march against you. Now the servants of the king of Aram said to him, Their gods are gods of the mountains. For that reason they were stronger than we. But let us fight them in the plain, and we will certainly be stronger than they. Carry out this plan, remove the kings, each from his place, and put governors in their place. And muster an army like the army that you have lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot. Then we will fight against them in the plain, and we will certainly be stronger than they. And he listened to their voice and did so. Another Aramean war. So at the turn of the year Ben had mustered the Arameans and went up to effect a fight against Israel. And the sons of Israel were mustered and given provisions, and they went to meet them. And the sons of Israel camped opposite them like two little flocks of goats, while the Arameans filled the country. Then a man of God approached and spoke to the king of Israel, and said, This is what the Lord says. Since the Arameans have said, The Lord is a God of mountains, but he is not a God of valleys, therefore I will hand over to you all this great multitude, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So they camped, one opposite the other, for seven days. And on the seventh day the battle was joined, and the sons of Israel killed of the Arameans a hundred thousand foot soldiers in a single day. But the rest fled to effect into the city, and the wall fell on twenty-seven thousand and men who were left. And Ben-Hadad fled and came into the city going from one inner room to another. But his servants said to him, Behold now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Please let's put sackcloth around our waists and ropes on our heads, and go out to the king of Israel. Perhaps he will let you live. So they put sackcloth around their waists and ropes on their heads, and came to the king of Israel and said, Your servant Ben-Hadad says, Please let me live. And Ahab said, Is he still alive? He is my brother. Now the men took this as a good omen, and quickly accepting it from him, they said, Your brother Ben-Hadad. Then he said, Go, bring him. Then Ben-Hadad came out to him. And he had him mount the chariot. And Ben-Hadad said to him, The cities which my father took from your father I will restore, and you can make streets for yourself in Damascus, as my father made in Samaria. Ahab said, And I will let you go with this covenant. So he made a covenant with him on let him go. Now a man from the sons of the prophets said to another by the word of the Lord, Please strike me. But the man refused to strike him. Then he said to him, Because you have not listened to the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as you leave me, a lion will kill you. And as soon as he left him a lion found him and killed him. Then he found another man and said, Please strike me. And the man struck him, injuring him. So the prophet departed and waited for the king by the road, and disguised himself with a bandage over his eyes. And as the king passed by, he cried out to the king and said, your servant went out into the midst of the battle. And behold, a man turned aside and brought a man to me and said, Get this man. If for any reason he goes missing, then your life shall be forfeited in place of his life, 
or else you shall pay a talent of silver. Now while your servant was busy here and there, he disappeared. And the king of Israel said to him, So shall your judgment be. You yourself determined it. Then he quickly took the bandage away from his eyes, and the king of Israel recognized him, that he was one of the prophets. And the prophet said to him, This is what the Lord says. Since you have let go from your hand the man I had designated for destruction, your life shall be forfeited in place of his life, and your people in place of his people. So the king of Israel went to his house sullen and furious, and came to Samaria Ahab covets Naboth's vineyard. Now it came about after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel beside the palace of Ahab, the king of Samaria. And Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard so that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is close beside my house, and I will give you a better vineyard in place of it. If you prefer, I will give you what it is worth in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid me that I would give you the inheritance of my fathers. So Ahab entered his house sullen and furious, because of the answer that Naboth the Jezreelite had given to him, since he said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned his face away, and ate no food. But Jezebel his wife came to him and said to him, How is it that your spirit is so sullen that you are not eating food? So he said to her, It is because I was speaking to Naboth the Jezreelite and saying to him, Give me your vineyard for money. Or else, if it pleases you, I will give you a vineyard in place of it. But he said, I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel his wife said to him, Do you now reign over Israel? Arise, eat bread, and let your heart be joyful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters to the elders and to the nobles who were living with Naboth in his city. Now she had written in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast and seat Naboth at the head of the people, and seat two worthless men opposite him, and have them testify against him, saying, You curse God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. Jezebel's Plot So the men of his city, the elders and the nobles who lived in his city, did just as Jezebel had sent word to them, just as it was written in the letters which she had sent them. They proclaimed a fast, and seated Naboth at the head of the people. Then the two worthless men came in and sat opposite him. And the worthless men testified against him, against Naboth, before the people, saying, Naboth cursed God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death with stones. Then they sent word to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. And when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money. For Naboth is not alive, but dead. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab got up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbit, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab king of Israel, who is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone down to take possession of it. And you shall speak to him, saying, This is what the Lord says, Have you murdered and also taken possession? And you shall speak to him, saying, The Lord says this. In the place where the dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, the dogs will lick up your blood, yours as well. Then Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, enemy of mine? And he answered, I have found you, because you have given yourself over to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I am bringing disaster upon you, and I will utterly sweep you away, and will eliminate from Ahab every male, both bond and free in Israel. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha the son of Ahijah because of the provocation with which you have provoked me to anger, and because you have misled Israel into sin. The Lord has also spoken of Jezebel, saying, The dogs will eat Jezebel in the territory of Jezreel. The one belonging to Ahab, who dies in the city, the dogs will eat. And the one who dies in the field, the birds of the sky will eat. There certainly was no one like Ahab who gave himself over to do evil in the sight of the Lord, because Jezebel his wife incited him. He also acted very despicably in following idols, conforming to everything that the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out from the sons of Israel. Yet it came about, when Ahab heard these words, that he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and fasted, and he lay in sackcloth and went about despondently. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbit, saying, Do you see how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his ace, I will bring the disaster upon his house in his son's days. Ahab's third campaign against Aram. 
Now three years passed without war between Aram and Israel. In the third year, Jehoshaphat the king of Judah came down to the king of Israel. Now the king of Israel said to his servants, Are you aware that Ramoth Jalid belongs to us, yet we are hesitant to take it out of the hand of the king of Aram? So he said to Jehoshaphat, Will you go to battle with me at Ramoth Jalid? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Consider me yours, my people yours, and my horses yours. However, Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Please request the word of the Lord first. So the king of Israel assembled the prophets, about four hundred men, and said to them, Should I go to battle against Ramoth Jalid or should I refrain? And they said, Go up. For the Lord will hand it over to the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no longer a prophet of the Lord here, that we may inquire of him? And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, because he does not prophesy anything good regarding me, but only bad. He is Micaiah the son of Imla. But Jehoshaphat said, May the king not say so. Then the king of Israel summoned an officer and said, Bring Micaiah son of Imla quickly. Now the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah were sitting, each on his throne, dressed in their robes, at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets were prophesying before them. Then Zedekiah the son of Chenaanah made horns of iron for himself and said, This is what the Lord says, With these you will gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the prophets were prophesying this as well, saying, Go up to Ramoth Jilead and succeed, for the Lord will hand it over to the king. Micaiah predicts defeat. Then the messenger who went to summon Micaiah spoke to him saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets are unanimously favorable to the king. Please let your word be like the word of one of them, and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, I shall speak it. When he came to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, should we go to battle against Ramoth Jalid, or should we refrain? And he said, Go up and succeed. For the Lord will hand it over to the king. Then the king said to him, How many times must I make you swear that you will tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? So he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, like sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These people have no master. Each of them is to return to his house in peace. Then the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy anything good regarding me, but only bad? Amakaiah said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the angels of heaven standing by him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab to go up and fall at Ramoth Jilead? And one spirit said this, while another said that. Then the spirit came forward and stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, How? And he said, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouths of all his prophets. Then he said, You shall entice him, and you will also prevail. Go and do so. Now then, behold, the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. And the Lord has declared disaster against you. Then Zedekiah the son of Chenana approached and struck Micaiah on the cheek. And he said, How did the spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? And Micaiah said, Behold, you are going to see how on that day when you go from one inner room to another trying to hide yourself. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon the governor of the city and to Josh the king's son, and say, This is what the king says, Put this man in prison, and feed him enough bread and water to survive until I return safely. But Micaiah said, If you actually return safely, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Listen, all you people. Defeat and death of Ahab. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah went up against Jamoth Jilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into the battle, but you put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. Now the king of Aram had commanded the thirty-two commanders of his chariots, saying, Do not fight with the small or great, but only with the king of Israel. So when the commanders of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, Surely he is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. Then, when the commanders of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. Now one man drew his bow at random and struck the king of Israel in a joint of the armor. So he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am severely wounded. The battle raged on that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot in front of the Arameans, and he died at evening, and the blood from the wound ran into the bottom of the chariot. Then the word passed throughout the army close to sunset, saying, 
every man to his city, and every man to his country. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. They washed out the chariot by the pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood. It was there that the prostitutes bathed themselves in accordance with the word of the Lord which he had spoken. Now as for the rest of the acts of Ahab, and everything that he did, and the ivory house which he built and all the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Ahab lay down with his fathers, and his son Ahazur became king in his place. The New Rulers Now Jehoshaphat the son of Asa became king over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was thirty-five years old when he became king, and he reigned for twenty-five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azabah the daughter of Shili. He walked entirely in the way of his father Asa. He did not turn aside from it, doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. However, the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. Now as for the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, and his might which he showed and how he made war, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And the remnant of the cult prostitutes who remained in the days of his father Asa, he eliminated from the land. Now there was no king in Adam. A governor served as king. Jehoshaphat built ships of Tarshish to go to Ophir for gold, but they did not go, because the ships were destroyed at Zionshba. Then Aasia the son of Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with your servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat was not willing. And Jehoshaphat lay down with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of his father David, and his son Jehoram became king in his place. Aasia the son of Ahab became king over Israel in Samaria in the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah and he reigned over Israel for two years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in the way of his mother, and in the way of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who misled Israel into sin. So he served Baal and worshipped him, and provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger, according to all that his father had done.